is believers are mandated to make disciples, baptize, and teach. However, before believers can obey this great commission, they must be discipled first. What does that mean? Greetings of peace in Christ Jesus, who commanded us to go and make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them to obey all the things that I have commanded you. When non-believers accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are then nurtured into a new life in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He puts off the old man and puts on the new man. He is then initiated into a worldview grounded on God's truth, the biblical perspective, which defines Christian way of understanding and of living. This is a lifelong learning in the ways of the Lord, where the word or the Bible is our teacher from without, and the Holy Spirit our teacher from within. The vision is for every Christian convert to be Christ-like, that is, discipling, the purpose and essence of Christian education. Yes, discipling defines Christian education in one word. Christian education is often associated with the children and the youth ministries. Learning, however, does not stop at those stages in life. The struggle of becoming like Christ takes a lifetime. Hence, Christian education covers all the life stages guided by the word. For children, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 instructs, Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And the values they have learned from you will be with them for life. And to the youth, the preacher in Ecclesiastes says, Young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. But don't let excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Yes, remember your creator now while you are young. Before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bowl is broken. Conversely, Paul exhorts the adult believers of Christ to stand firm in the faith. For God in Isaiah 7, 9 says, Unless your faith is firm, God cannot make you stand firm. Here in CRL, the Christian Education Ministry has programs for all three groups. The threefold kids ministry aims at introducing the kids to Jesus and encourages them to share with their families and friends what they have learned about Jesus. And that is that Jesus loves them all. This Saturday online kids fellowship has been meeting without fail since October 2020 with teachers Jenna and AC. 
We have about 14 to 18 regulars, but occasionally we have about 21 to 28 kids with their parents, kuyas, artists beside them. Most of these kids sing in the virtual choir, while some of them lead in our kids' church every Sunday. When they sing, Jesus loves me, or Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, or Jesus loves the little children, they are imparting significant gospel truths that by God's grace and in God's strength will bear the fruit that God desires. For the youth, we have the Junior CYF Bible Study for Teenagers, ages 12 to 15, which started with only two and is now growing. We are looking forward to seeing more teens from CRL in this Bible study group. Presently, of about nine teenagers in the group, there is only Alexis Claire Gisulga from CRL. We are waiting for other CRL teens to join the group that teacher Jenna and Pastor Kalum facilitate. And there is the Young Adult Fellowship that has been meeting consistently with some participants taking the lead. The Church of the Risen Lord Christian Education Ministry for Continuing Adult Education, which in this pandemic season is basically the 14 online Bible studies facilitated by 12. Six pastors, Pastors Kalu, Naomi, Ernest, Viola, Art, and Pastor Nene, Deaconess Jenna, and five laymen, Agnes, Babes, Marlin, Miriam, and yours truly. September is designated as Christian Education Month. Pre-pandemic time finds the CE team come together for recommitment, fellowship, and evaluation. For this second year of the pandemic, Christian Education Ministry has chosen a heart to change the world as theme. At this point, allow me to reflect on how the pandemic influences this theme. The COVID-19 pandemic has steered havoc in our world. It changes our way of doing things, our social dynamics, the way we think, and we pass it off as the new normal, a major paradigm shift that calls for, among other things, restriction of movement, social distancing, face shields and face masks, isolation, lockdown, vaccination, and it also sees the migration and mass to the digital platform of community activities, online classes, online worship and Bible studies, meetings, webinars, and many more. And thirdly, we witness the matter of fact treatment of unexpected death of loved ones and separation from them without goodbyes. Fear stalks most of us as we ponder on the what ifs. What if a family member tests positive? What if no hospital bed is available? What if he or she dies? 
peers at us it may, let us view the pandemic landscape as a building block of our faith. Firstly, this pandemic definitely kindles our awareness of the value of life. That is the tripartite life mentioned in the New Testament, namely the bios or physical life, the suki or soulish life, and the zoe, the divine spiritual life, the eternal life, which we receive when we are born again. Oftentimes, we take life for granted until we lose it. Yes, we take this tripartite life for granted. Thus, Moses in Psalm 90 verse 12 cries, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. While Matthew chapter 16 verse 25 admonishes, what kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade for your soul? Even more telling is what Jesus said to those who are wasting their Zoe life away by focusing on what they are doing for Jesus rather than on digging deeper roots in the relationship with him. Jesus in Matthew 7 verses 22 to 23 says on the day of judgment many will say to me lord lord don't you remember us did we not prophesy in your name did we not cast out demons and do many miracles in your name but i will have to say to them go away from me you lawless rebels, I have never been joined to you. Yes, gaining life, abundant life, is the unfolding of God's plan for his people. And God's plan is clearly expressed in his word in the Bible. Let us not lose life for lack of knowledge as God intimated to the prophet Hosea, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When my cousin died of COVID last August, I called her older sister who shared with me her concern about her dead sister's reluctance to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. On the other hand, the pastors, elders, and the young people of her church have been busy proclaiming the gospel, sowing the seed of life, everlasting life in these uncertain times. That her church is growing in leaps and bounds with house churches in various villages in the suburbs is for me a testimony to three things. First, man's need for God and for everlasting life. Second, the need for soul winners for Christ. And third, the equipping of God for this life-giving task. That leads me to my second point. This pandemic opens wide the door of the gospel to the world. Man is vulnerable when faced with his mortality. He seriously ponders his state of his spiritual well-being. He needs a savior. The pandemic brings upfront 
the spiritual frontliners, believers who obey the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19. Go, make disciples, baptize, and teach. On the 64th session of our online Bible study meet, sometimes in August, we talked about the COVID-19 pandemic and the epidemic of fear. The significant output in that discussion was the perspective of the participants on the pandemic as a blessing. Reason? It draws them closer to Jesus as they dig deeper roots in their relationship with him by reading, studying, meditating on the word, and by having a consistent prayer life during this stay at home season. That indeed was good to know, but that is only half the story. Proclaiming to others your faith in Christ Jesus so that they too may know him and will have life. That completes the story. Verses 13 to 17 of Romans 10 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? For faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Out of the mouth of our children, our messengers in song this morning, comes this exhortation. We've got to have a heart that cares enough and loves so much to let the world know that Jesus loves them. How will the people know unless we show them? How will the people know unless we show them? Yes, how will that people know unless we show them. And the message ends up by declaring, by God's grace, in God's strength, we can change the world. We can let the world know that Jesus loves them. One heart at a time. This pandemic has widened the reach of Christian education ministry. Thanks to Zoom, Messenger, and other digital platforms. Christian education ministry has now gone borderless. Yes, Christian education ministry without borders. The imposition of the March 2020 COVID-19 ECQ marked the temporary stoppage of our 21-year-old Vespers Bible study. When the lockdown was not lifted in May 2020, Pastor Nene and I decided to migrate this Bible study online, thinking that COVID-19 should not hinder or stop altogether the study of the word. That has allowed many more participants in the Bible study from a wider range of locations. We are having our 70th session this Thursday. Moreover, 
our junior CYF Bible study and other Bible studies as well are no longer confined to the spaces and walls of the Church of the Risen Lord. This has spread God's influence. Likewise, our kids' fellowship goes live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. and our kids' worship goes online and is beamed to the world every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. We connect with each other via group chat, share crafts, Bible movies, and many more. And together, we connect to the world with our simple methods of salvation in Jesus. How wonderfully God weaves these lockdowns and isolations into a beautiful tapestry of far-ranging connection for his purposes. Soon our kids' virtual choir from different parts of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao will be singing, My hands are the hands that God will use to show the world his love. My feet are the feet that God will use to carry forth the light. If people will believe in him, they can have eternal life. My voice is the voice that God will use to tell the world he cares, to share with the world what he did for me that he did for them too. The pandemic landscape viewed from the eyes of faith is a season of grace that kindles our awareness of the value of life, that is, the tripartite life, the bios, the suki, and the zoe. This season of grace flings wide the open door of the gospel to the world, and it activates a Christian education ministry without borders. This enables us to heed the gospel call God sends forth in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. And I quote, At the time of grace, I listened to you, and I helped you in the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Unquote. This pandemic is here to build our faith, not to demolish it. Together, we become disciples to disciple others. This pandemic is a call to life in Christ and a mandate for believers to be frontliners for the gospel. Let us be frontliners in this season of grace, ever ready and willing to say, here I am, Lord, send me. When the Lord asks, whom should I send as messenger to this people? Who will go for us? People may not cry. The harvest is finished. The summer is gone, yet we are not saved. Instead, we hear the sound of rejoicing reverberates all over the land as people shout. The season has changed. The abundance of our barren winter has ended. And the season of hiding is over and gone. Blessed Christian Education Ministry Sunday, brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord has made this day of gladness and joy, filling our hearts with glee. May we all 
bring honor and glory to our God in the days ahead. Amen.